Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Mason Rudolph had a really scary moment after getting hit, knocked unconscious, and ultimately having to be taken to the hospital. Thankfully, at the time of recording this, the last word we've gotten is that he's been released from the hospital and is overall doing okay. Welcome back, everybody, to your number one source for learning about everything related to sports injuries and sports medicine news. In this video, I'm gonna walk you guys through the sequence of what exactly happened with Mason Rudolph to try to hit on some key kind of educational points about this whole sequence of events. We'll talk about what's going on inside the body and why players can look like this after they get a concussion with the abnormal positions they take. And we'll also kind of talk about the whole situation with why he wasn't put on the backboard, what happened there, and then finally finish up with kind of what these return to play steps are gonna be for when he could come back and play. Make sure and go subscribe if you like this type of content and want to stay up to date with future videos. And let's get started. Starting off with the abnormal movements and kind of position that it looked like Rudolph was in after he got knocked unconscious. After Rudolph takes the hit here and gets knocked unconscious, we can see as his body's falling to the ground, his arms go into this kind of abnormal position where it looks like his right arm is a little bit extended or straight and his left arm is kind of flexed up. We refer to this as posturing. Depending on where we see damage to the brain, our body can go into these abnormal motor activation patterns we call posturing. The two common ones we think about are decorticate and decerebrate posturing, but this particular type of posturing we can see after concussions is often referred to as a fencing response. It has this name because it sort of looks like an on guard position when someone's fencing with the arm extended out and the other arm flexed up inside. As you would guess, this partly indicates the severity of the brain injury. In particular, when we see the fencing response, we think Think that there's been some sort of shock or trauma to the brainstem, which is kind of the portion above the spinal cord and down at the lower part of the brain. Your brainstem is responsible for a lot of the reflexic type things that we do throughout our everyday life. And so when there's been this shock to the brainstem, we think that that triggers this abnormal reflex where the arms go into that position. It's in part a drawback on a reflex that we all have whenever we're first born called the ATNR or the asymmetric tonic neck reflex. This is a reflex where when a baby's head is turned to the side, their arm that it's turned to the side to extends outward and the opposite arm comes up flexed inward. This goes away around four or five months and we think that the purpose of it has a couple of different reasons. It's partly responsible for helping to break a fall. So whenever you turn and you see you're falling, you extend your arm out to try to help break that fall. Also when kids are growing and developing, whenever their head is turned, they're working on reaching out to things. And so there's some thought that maybe when the head's turned, that exhibits this reflex to kind of extend the arm out to grab something. So when we see the fencing response, like what happened here with Rudolph, it A, indicates the severity of the brain injury being more than just a mild concussion. And B, tells us that there's probably been some sort of shock to the brainstem that causes these abnormal reflex patterns to get activated that cause those arms to go into that fencing position. But this is all a reflex within the brain. There's nothing that Rudolph is doing. There's nothing he's controlling or can break out of this. This is purely damage to the brain causes this reflex pattern which triggers those muscles. The whole sequence of what happened afterwards with him basically being helped off the field even though the cart came out to get him, of course we've heard that the cart wasn't working and so that's why they carried him off the field, but I have a lot of additional questions about how this was managed. The general rule anytime we have an athlete who's down on the field and who's unconscious is we assume that they have a spinal cord injury. We have no way of asking them their symptoms, we have no way of doing an exam, and so the protocol is you're supposed to assume a spinal cord injury and immobilize the cervical spine and get them on a backboard and off the field. Even if someone's just mildly altered, like it looked like Rudolph was here towards the end, you still can't get a reliable exam, and especially with a mechanism like this, you really have to assume that there's been some sort of damage to the spine. So if you're following that protocol, I don't understand why they didn't just put him on the backboard and then on the stretcher and then just roll him off the field on the stretcher. I don't know why they had to throw out that whole plan just because the cart wasn't working. So for everybody watching that that thought this really doesn't look right, I kind of felt the same way watching this as someone from a medical perspective. I really think they probably should have done everything they could to keep him on a backboard and get him off the field safely because they have no way of knowing in his altered level of consciousness if there's a possible injury to his spine. Thankfully, it sounds like everything's okay, but this was really scary watching them try to get him up without using the backboard like I really think protocol would call for. What's next for Rudolph though in terms of his return to play protocol and when we might see him back? Certainly when we see posturing like this, it indicates a more severe brain injury than just a routine concussion where someone did not lose consciousness. Loss of consciousness can help predict the recovery of a concussion, so the fact that that happened tells us that it could be a more delayed recovery. But in general, he's probably gonna follow the same return to play protocol that anybody would follow with a concussion that didn't look as severe as this. There's five main steps to think about within the NFL's concussion protocol, and for that matter, 
within any sort of concussion return to play protocol. The first, of course, is general rest. Rudolph is gonna go home, he's gonna rest, he's gonna try to let his brain heal because he has suffered an injury to his brain. Now, this doesn't mean that we tell athletes to go home and lay in a dark room, but it means they're trying to rest and do things that don't provoke any of their symptoms. So if lights bother them, if sounds bother them, screens bother them, you wanna stay away from those things while allowing your brain to recover, but you don't wanna completely go isolate yourself in a dark room for a week. Once your symptoms have gotten under better control, the second step of this protocol is doing light aerobic exercise. This is a gradual program where you start off doing very light things like walking on a treadmill, riding an exercise bike at very low speeds, and then gradually increase the duration and the intensity to the point where you're not having symptoms. In order to get through this step, you have to be able to do this light aerobic exercise without having provocation of your symptoms. The third step is more strength training and conditioning. This is where you're gonna do bench press, squats, your weightlifting, and at this step, you again, have to make sure there's no provocation or bringing about of symptoms. Once you're able to complete this step with no symptoms, then you go on to step four, which is more sports specific activities. So here, Rudolph is gonna be doing non-contact drills during practice, like going out, throwing a football, going out and running some basic drills, but doing non-contact type of sport. Again, if at this stage he's asymptomatic, he's feeling good, his exam is normal, then they can progress him to step five, which is actual return to full practice, to full activity. At every step along this sequence, they're gonna be evaluating him, they're gonna be doing physical exams. Most times they even have objective testing where they have players go through kind of these computerized tests that look at eye tracking or look at memory. So they can also have an objective measurement from day to day to see how he's progressing. But these concussions could end a season. There's something we refer to as post-concussive syndrome, which is just a prolonged presence of these concussion-related symptoms well beyond the time point where they should resolve. Most concussions resolve within a matter of one to two weeks, but sometimes these can persist and can last longer and could end someone's season just because of the persistence of symptoms. Remember, a concussion is a brain injury. It's not just something to take lightly. This is damage to your brain, and so we have to really give it the respect and the treatment that it requires. So I wish Rudolph the best in his recovery. I'm glad to hear that things checked out okay at the hospital and that he doesn't have any sort of spine injury. We'll see what his recovery progresses like and when he's able to return. Stay tuned to the channel to give updates on this later on if we get more information about his recovery. But until then, I hope you guys learned something in this video about the severity of concussions, things we can look for on the field. And until next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye.